All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and dive into this thing. So, yeah, thank you so much for being here. I uh, really appreciate it. First ever one number YouTube live uh, undertaking. Uh, so let me go ahead and get things flipped around here a little bit. So I am sharing my screen. I did put my Mariners jersey on today, even though they're not doing too well. And you can see from the baseball reference page that their odds of making the playoffs are down to the single digits. That is the life of being a Mariners fan. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip over to an image here uh, where we can discuss kind of what our what our plan is for today. Uh, so I, I do a bit of work on Tableau Public where uh, I just, you know, download some data, whether it's government data, maybe bring my own personal running data in or something like that, build some dashboards and, and then publish it. Um, and I've heard in the past that it's possible to create a connection that Tableau keeps updated for you in Tableau Public, but I, I've never really tried it for myself. So from everything that I'd heard, it was supposed to be pretty straightforward. Like, okay, you create a Google Sheet and then you publish that dashboard to Tableau Public. And then uh, there's like a checkbox where it says, you know, keep this up to date, update it once a day, whatever the exact language is. So I went about trying that and I feel like things worked for like a day. It would just like, okay, you do it on a Monday, you check back Tuesday, it's working. And then I would check in again, like Wednesday or Thursday, and it was no longer auto updating. Um, and what I realized, I think, because I haven't found confirmation of this anywhere on the web, but I, I think what happens is that um, Google Sheets will only automatically keep updating a sheet for you when you open it. So if you use some sort of import function in Google Sheets, as long as you open it occasionally, it'll do an update. But if you set a, set a sheet you know, import HTML, for instance, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, if you set a sheet to do that and you never open that sheet, then it just caches where the data was at and it doesn't update it again until you open it. So obviously that doesn't really work because I don't want to, I mean, much as I love the Mariners, I don't want to have to go to a spreadsheet every single day just to open it so that Tableau can connect to the latest data. So I ended up going on this journey of trying to figure out how I could get that spreadsheet to update for me automatically without me needing to go back and do a bunch of manual intervention. So that's kind of the idea of, uh, of what we'll be working on here today. So let me go ahead and pull up an image that'll kind of tell the story of where we're going to be going. All right, so we're going to start with some data from the baseballreference.com website where they just post tables of baseball data. If you're not a baseball person, Yes, I'm going to nerd out on baseball a little bit, but that's not really going to be the crux of what we're working on. This could be any table of data, right? I mean, this could be um, carbon emissions or air quality index, uh, or even like this would this can work with like CSVs as well. So if you have a place where you have to go connect to a CSV on a regular basis and do a download, you know, as long as it's available publicly, like you don't need to log into a page somewhere, this will actually work for that as well. So we use baseball reference as our uh, as kind of our test case. We'll pull that data into Google Sheets. And then, like I said, pulling it into Google Sheets alone is not enough because it won't auto update. What we're gonna need to do from there is we're gonna write a simple JavaScript uh, block of code in Google Apps Script that will keep it updating for us on a regular basis. Then we're gonna go ahead and connect to that in Tableau Desktop. We'll kind of build some content out. We'll chat about it a little bit. Uh, you know, you can kind of throw ideas my way if you want. And then we'll publish it to Tableau Public and I'll show you what that looks like um, and where you select to be able to keep everything up to date. So this will be sort of our journey and our end goal will be, it maybe won't be perfectly this, we'll kind of see how things go, but it will be to create something like what I've screenshotted there where we can look at some, some different statistics and hopefully be able to keep it somewhat up to date. All right, so first off, I'm gonna to go to the Baseball Reference webpage and just show you what this looks like. You've actually seen it already, uh, but we're gonna dive into it into a little bit more detail. So on this page, there's a bunch of just 
information at the beginning. And as you scroll down, you know, there's some sort of table here with some information. And eventually you get to kind of a proper data table, meaning like there's columns and rows and, you know, kind of the standard stuff that we look for when we're working with data in Tableau. So this is the table of data that I want to pull. Um, the nice thing about it is that I don't know how quickly they updated after games, but it's updated every single day. So I guess we're a little bit out of sync right now just because the Mariners had an off day. But their last game they played was Sunday, May 9th. So you can see that that row of data is all updated with the information, like they lost really badly and all of that. And then you can see their next game is today. But of course, we don't actually know the score of that yet. Okay, so that's what I want to grab. So now I need to go to Google Sheets to grab that. So I'm gonna flip over here and what we're looking for is called the import HTML function. The reason we're doing import HTML is because that's how you can grab a table of data that's published to a web page like this. Um, I mentioned also that you could do something like a CSV. So in that case, you would use a function called import data. So I'll just show you a couple of these functions just so that you have these. So depending on what it is that you need. So we'll be using import HTML for our purposes today. But other ones that you might find interesting, uh, import data. I'm trying to get my equal sign right here. So import data, that's for like a CSV or a TSV, which is a tab separated value format. And then actually there's, um, I think there's an import XML as well. So depending on what the data is structured like, any of those could potentially work for you. Okay, so uh, the way this is gonna work, let me go ahead and do my import HTML here, is I'll say import HTML, and then I need to put the web page that I was just looking at, is kind of the first reference in quotations. So I'll do an open quote, just simply copy and paste the page we were just looking at, end quote. Okay. Then I need to identify that I'm specifically trying to grab a table of data. So I'm just going to put the word table in quotes and then tell it which table I'm looking for. And what I mean by that is there could be multiple tables of data in a single web page. So I need to tell it, am I looking for the first, second, third? In this case, sometimes this takes a little trial and error because like, what does Tableau consider a table? Or sorry, what does Google Sheets consider a table, right? Like when I was first doing this, I was like, is, does Google Sheets think that like this thing is a table? I don't know. So I just kind of played around with it. And I was like, well, let's just see what happens if I do comma one, close the parentheses, and then hit enter. Um, and then it's like magic basically, right? It pulls all of the data into this Google Sheet and you can see it's kind of perfectly in sync with what we just looked at. So the game from May 9th updated, game from May 11th not yet updated. So two things, let me go back there. Um, I just did that in cell uh, 1A or A1. Um, and then I'm gonna just zoom in on this so you can see this all. So you have this format kind of up front and center. Uh, I'm recording this, so hopefully that works. And in doing that, I'll follow up with this as well. So all you will need to do if you want to try this for yourself is just change the reference to whatever web page that you're using. And then, you know, I'm assuming you're using a table and then, it, you know, depending on if it's the first table or a later table, I can indicate that there. Okay, so like I said, in the real world, um, this is where I thought everything was good. I Googled it. It was like, yeah, of course, uh, Google keeps import functions up to date, so you don't have to do anything else. And then I, I just thought that, uh, that I was fine. But it turns out, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Um, so I had pulled it all in, you know, went through a few days of different issues, and then that's where I came back here. And I started to look for solutions online. How do I keep this Google Sheet updating even if I'm not accessing it? Um, so I found, I kind of pieced together some ideas from different blog posts, different videos that I'd seen. Uh, and, and here's what I figured out. So uh, you need to be able to set essentially a timer in the background of Sheets 
so that it knows to update on a regular basis, right? So for instance, like what I could do is set an hourly timer to keep this up to date. So let me show you. Uh, so I need a custom script and I'm going to tie that in with a time, I don't what the term they use is, essentially a time driven update cycle. So I'm going to select the tools drop down uh, from the toolbar here in Google Sheets. And then I'm going to select script editor. Okay. Um, I don't have any like special, you know, I, I, I have, don't have like a paid Google account or I guess I technically do, but even with like a free Google account, you should be able to do everything that I'm showing you here. Um, just like with your Gmail, if not, let me know and I can look into that a little bit more, but should be available to, to just about anybody. So I'll click on script editor here and it'll pull up, uh, this, this little project, uh, takes a moment to load. And then you can see that, okay, uh, I've got a place where I can write some JavaScript. And so you're probably thinking, hey, what the heck? The name of this thing is called No Python, No Problem. I thought we were not going to be doing coding. We're going to be doing very minimal coding. Um, so you saw that technically, I guess, there was a little coding to do there in Google Sheets. Um, and now we've got a little bit of code to write here in Google, or in Google App Script. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to copy and paste this from uh, a second screen that I've got pulled up here. And then I'll just walk you through how this works. So what I just copied and pasted here is the JavaScript code that will keep my data up to date. Uh, I didn't like write this all from scratch myself. I basically copied this off somebody else and then just updated the pieces that I needed for this to work. So what you can see here is we're just kind of we've kind of pulled back uh, the covers a little bit to see what's going on behind the scenes. So now instead of just writing, you know, equals import HTML, we have the function is called get HTML data. Okay. So the only things that, like if you, if I, I'll give you this code and the only thing that you would need to do to change this, if you're using a different web page and trying to get this to import to a different Google sheet. So first of all, the sheet name. Okay. The, I, I guess I didn't explicitly show you this. I'll, I'll show you when I flip back, but the the tab in Google Sheets is just SEA for Seattle. And then here, actually, you can see that whole function that we just wrote, right? So in this case, uh, all you would need to do is update the URL and then if necessary, which table number that you're referencing. Okay. So this is part one, just getting this sort of custom script here. Now part two is setting the timer. And where I need to go for that, this has moved around a little bit. So, you know, if you see some different videos, they might show it being at the top, but you're looking for this little clock icon. And right now, at least, uh, it's it's found on the, uh, the left pane here in Google Apps, App Script. So I'm gonna select that, it's called Triggers. And I'm going to go down to the bottom right corner of my screen and select add trigger. Okay. It just takes a moment to, uh, get everything loaded up. Oh, what did it just say? I can't, maybe I need to save my previous work. All right. Give me one second to save what I just put in the editor here. And let me see if it'll allow me to set the, set it then. Let me just run it once too, just so that it's executed successfully. Shouldn't take too long, hopefully. If I did it right, that is. Uh, all right. Oh yeah, the first time that you run it, you have to set permissions so that App Script can. Uh, well, it will allow App Script to access this sheet, you know, in your Google Drive. So I'm just saying, yeah, okay, whatever. Allow that. Allow all that. So there you go. You can see that uh, the actual execution took, I don't know, just about a second. So not too long. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my uh, triggers and then it, now that it has access and it's run successfully, it should allow me to do this. So back to add trigger. There we go, it's all popped up. So it says choose which function to run, get HTML data, that's great. Choose which deployment should run. I've only got one, so that's great. Select event source. So this is where it's super important, right? So the default nature of Google Sheets is that it 
the event source or the triggering function so that the sheet updates is from the spreadsheet, meaning like when the spreadsheet's open. Uh, but unless you just want to have a spreadsheet open all the time, what you could do is set up a time-driven event. So I say time-driven. Um, for me, hourly is plenty. Um, I don't want to like overtax my, my Google account. So I could probably even just have done this daily and just pick the end of the day or something. But we'll just do every hour uh, to be safe. But you can see there's a lot of options. I, I mean, I guess I could even just do like every four hours and that would probably be plenty. Okay. And then this here is just for failures. So, you know, if for some reason it doesn't execute successfully, whether it's permissions or the website you're pulling from changes, uh, you can get a notification of that. Okay. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back to my editor. And I'll just manually run this again now that it's all updated. Make sure it's still working. It says it's still working. So, so far, so good. Now, I just want to show one other thing here in Google Sheets before we flip over to Tableau and start actually working with this data. And that's what happens if you have multiple sheets that you want to keep updated. So right now, I've only just done this for the, the uh, baseball reference page for Seattle for this year. Uh, but what if I want to keep it updated for others as well? And just to kind of explain that, I in my original, the way that I built this, um, I've actually got this set up so that every single team, like all these circles in the scatter plot represent a different team. I've got 30 different tabs for 30 different teams that are all doing essentially the same thing, uh, except just pulling from different pages. So let me show you what it is that I mean by that. So flip back here to Google Sheets and I'm actually, actually I'll go to the baseball reference page. I'm just gonna duplicate this browser tab. And baseball reference has set up their website very simply so that the uh, the little moniker here or the, the characters represent different teams. So like SEA is Seattle, but like SD would be San Diego. So put the San Diego Padres in here and then I can see what's going on with them. So if I wanted to have a secondary uh, tab in my Google Sheets that's updating for the Padres, simple as this. So I'm just gonna copy here, go, get, go back to Google Sheets, duplicate my tab down here. So now instead of SEA, this next one will be SD for San Diego, okay? Uh, at the top here, this kind of custom script, or the, uh, the the import function, I should say. I'm just going to change the the web page to be referring to the San Diego web page instead. So it'll do its thing and update that. And then in the custom script, I would go back there. I'm going to say script editor again. And then let me see if this will work. I guess it's loading it. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is it's only still a singular function. Like I'm going to just be using the get HTML data function again, but this time just for a different page. So all I need to do is just copy all of this, uh, paste it, keep it within the same curly braces as before so that I know where the opening and the closing of this function is. Except this time around, uh, let me kind of look here, make sure I copied that all correctly. Sheet name, SD for San Diego. The import HTML function is gonna to refer to the San Diego page on the baseball reference website. So let me save this, and then let me just do again a test run just to make sure that's working correctly. It says that it is, so we can kind of go back and double check this. And nothing broken, seems like it's working. So that's, uh, that's always a good sign. So. Let me just take a pause there, and I know there's a bit of a delay for feedback between kind of when you can chat me and when I can get it, but any questions on anything that we've covered so far, whether that's accessing a web page, uh, pulling it into Google Sheets, or any of the kind of custom scripting. And like I said, and if you just jumped in here and kind of missed maybe something about 10 minutes ago, I'm gonna provide all of the code, whether that's the script for just like the regular import HTML function or the JavaScript script. So 
you'll have all of that. But uh, yeah, let me just pause for a moment and just see if there are any questions on uh, anything that we've covered here so far. I'm not seeing anything yet, uh, although, it, like I said, there's a bit of a delay and it's hard for me to manage the chat and the video and everything at once. I'll check back in in a little bit and I can always bounce back here and address any questions if anything comes up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll flip into Tableau now and I'm actually going to use the kind of full, full built out version of this Google Sheet that I have. Uh, meaning like the one where I created a tab for every single team. So there's 30 tabs instead of just these two. No reason to make you sit through me having to do all that uh, just because, you know, uh, that it would just be the same thing over and over again 30 times. So uh, just for the sake of having all that data though, let me go ahead and open up Tableau Desktop. Pull this onto my screen here. So I'll go ahead and get uh, a connection going for Google Sheets. If you haven't done a Google Sheets connection before, uh, what it does is it actually sends a prompt to your external browser. So for instance, I just actually got this on my, uh, on my Google Chrome. So it says, hey, choose an account. So I'm gonna choose my business account. Click on that. And then it says, hey, are you sure you wanna allow Tableau to access you know, your drive? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, it's authenticated. So now once it's all authenticated and I've allowed everything, then you can see that I have all these options uh, for different sheets that I can connect to, okay? So that one that we were just working on is the Seattle Mariners Tracker 2021 test. The one that I've built out fully is 2021 MLB results. So let me connect to that. Okay, so now you can see uh, on the left side of my screen, there's a whole bunch of different sheets, one for each of the different tabs representing each of the different teams. So let me go ahead and just start by grabbing that first one, Arizona, and pull that to where it says drag tables here. And then just to keep this simple, uh, so if you're using newer versions of Tableau, like the 20 late 2020 series 2021 it's going to be relationships by default but you can still get things like unions and joins to work so i'm just gonna well that didn't work <laughs> i'm just gonna shift select all the rest of my sheets not arizona and uh hover just below that arizona section to where it says union and drop that in there It's gonna take a little bit of memory to be able to process this, so I'll just give this a second. And I just got a little note from the YouTube stream that it said uh, something about receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. So Kirk, feel free just to shoot me a text message if anything seems wrong and I'll try and close some pages here on my computer. Okay. So now that it's loaded, let me just double check this union to make sure it's got everything that I want. Should have all 30 of my team's pages. And uh, yep, there you go, actually. The easiest way to see this would just be down there at the bottom, tables in union 30. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And uh, there's a few things I'm gonna need to do to clean it up. You can see the data pulled in pretty well, but not perfectly. Uh, so these different columns here, you know, there's some kind of filler columns, which are just like at signs, Arizona's playing at San Diego, those kinds of things. So I'm not going to spend too long on this, but there's some of these that I could just hide entirely that I'll never need. Okay. Uh, the way that that baseball reference data was set up is that there's kind of some weird breaks between each month. So you can see that, uh, like the first... 30, so that all the days of April are broken up together and then it goes into May and eventually you'd get a header for June and all of that. So what you can see though is that, oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, there we go. 
instead of having a game number like 2728, it just has the header again for a game number. So Baseball Reference does that so that reading their web page is easier so that as you're scrolling down, then you can continue to, you know, kind of keep up. Um, but we don't need that. So let me go to Tableau, do a little cleanup here. So I'm going to add a filter for game number. Oh, actually, wait, it's this numeric values. Hold on. Let me see what this looks like. It should be, oh, it's just null. Okay. Because it didn't, because it, it's a numeric field. Okay. So I guess what I need to do is add something for game number. In this case, it will just be a special filter to just keep non-null values. So only give me my numeric values. So when I hit okay on that, that section here where you can see that it says null should go away. Okay, so let's scroll down again and see that, perfect. Yeah, so it should be fairly seamless between, uh, you know, whatever it is, the, or I guess the 11th is today, right? So there you go. It just goes straight from game 35 to 36. Uh, another issue is that I don't want to keep data from the future, meaning like that doesn't do me any good to see, uh, you know, May 11th data, for instance, because there is no May 11th data. No games have actually occurred yet. All right. So what I'm also going to do is let me think about where I want to do this. There's a number of columns I could use for this. Probably F3 will be the best where if a game is completed, it says box score. And if it's not, it says preview. So I'm just gonna do an edit here, or sorry, add a filter here and uh, add one for, that column is just called F3. So I'll just do F3 and anything that says preview, I'm just gonna exclude that. So now I should scroll down. You can see that the first team's Arizona just cause they're the first one alphabetically. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, boom. So their last game, Monday, May 10th, and then immediately it goes to Atlanta. And then it starts with their game one. So this is exactly what I was hoping for. All right, so we've got our data mostly set up. Might do a couple calculations, but I think we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, I think actually while we're just on this page, one other thing that I wanna do is to create some wins and loss fields, individual values because the wins and losses are just captured um, as a single column by default in the data set. So let me go ahead and just do a, a custom split on the dash and just ask for all columns. See how this comes out. Seems like that's working correctly. So just to focus in on just a single one of these values, you can see that as of after their fourth game of the year, the Arizona Diamondbacks were one and three. The first column says one, the second column says three. So that's exactly what we would want. Let me just do a little renaming here. So this column is wins. This column is losses. And let's just see if Tableau will just let me flip these types. Right now they're uh, text-based fields, but let me just see if Tableau will let me switch them to whole numbers. Uh, if not, I might need to write a calculation. Seems like it's working, so that's good. Okay. Uh, Glance through this again. One other uh, field that I want to create here is called run differential. So that's something that's going to play into some of the visuals that I will create. Uh, run differential is just a fancy way of saying how many runs did I score minus how many runs did my opponent score. So you take this first game for Arizona here. They had seven runs. Their opponent had eight runs. So their run differential was minus one. Okay, so this will just be runs minus runs allowed. Simple as that. Um, what's it not like about that? Oh, they're not, uh, it thinks they're text fields. Well, whatever, let me just do it like this. I could go back and change the field types, but it's probably faster just to add the integer type conversion function in front of those columns, keep things simple.
Cool. There you go. So you can see their first game, they lost by one. So the run differential is minus one. The next game, they lost by two. So it's minus two and so on. So I think our data is pretty ready to roll. There might be a couple other things that I end up doing, but uh, I think we're ready to, uh, to do some building. So one of my favorite things to look at, and it's just, a, it's just a simple thing that you can do with baseball data, is compare a team's run differential to their winning percentage. Um, so meaning, like right now, the Mariners are not doing so great. Let's actually, uh, I'm going to pull up my current Mariners tracker to see. So on this version I've got published on Tableau Public, uh, they're 18 and 17, which means they've won 51% of their games and their run differential is minus 15, you know, at this point in the season. So that means that uh, this is where they fall on our little chart, right? Oops, try that again. So this is where they fall on our chart. So you can see that this trend line here not my best trend line, but this trend line here is expectations or where, how many games they probably should have won based on how many runs they've scored and how many runs their opponents have scored. So you can see the Mariners are still a solid like 6% above where they should be. Um, whereas like this is the Houston Astros here and I'll explain that in a minute. They're probably kind of the other way. They're probably like 6 or 7% below where they should be. So in time, you know, it doesn't always end up perfect, but essentially over time, uh, everybody is going to sort of regress to being closer to this line, whereas you see people being further away from this line earlier in the season. And actually, that's been true, I guess. I'd have to go back through this and like filter it back to a week or two ago, but that's actually possible to see that as well, which is interesting. Like, you know, the, early in the season, the you know, it doesn't really matter for, for those of you non-baseball fans, but like the Los Angeles Dodgers were like way the heck out here and the Detroit Tigers who are down here now are like way the heck down here. So they've kind of started to come back to that, uh, that line a bit. So yeah, let's just start with this one here. So I'll just call this chart uh, run differential versus winning percentage. Okay. And essentially I want where a team's run differential and where a team's winning percentage is at right now. Um, we could set it up so that somebody could filter back to say like, where was it two weeks ago? But the default view is that I want it to be at where, where is it right now? So run differential is fairly simple because the sum of the run differential should just be a team's current run differential. So just to look at that in a table format, uh, let me look at this. I'm gonna rename this field sheet to team. So I'll put team on rows, it should load all my team names, and I'll put run differential on text, and then we can use the Mariners as our test case. So the Mariners are showing up at negative 15 run differential. Go back here, see what my uh, most recent thing says. So that's good, negative 15. The winning percentage is going to be a little bit more difficult because there's a uh, the way the data is set up, let me kind of open it up again. Where wins? There they are. So the wins are kind of cumulative, right? Like you had zero, you had zero, you had zero. You had one, two, two, two. So I can't just say like, what is the sum of the number of wins that the Mariners have? And let me make wins and losses as measures here. Because the Mariners in real life have what? I think I said 18 wins. But if I put this on here, it's going to be the sum of their wins from every column. So it's going to say 353. Uh, impossible. This, that's t twice as long as the season is. So uh, what I need to do, I think the way I've handled this in the past is to use a team's maximum wins divided by their max wins and losses. So here's what that calculation would look like. So I'll call this current winning percentage, and I'll just say, uh, yeah, so maximum wins. So the maximum wins the Mariners have seen to this point in the season is 18 divided by max wins uh, plus max losses. And then let me just uh, put this whole thing in parentheses here, get our order of operations working the way that we want. I think this should work, uh, although we'll uh, we'll double check this here in just a moment. OK, 
Okay, just make sure that's a percentage with one decimal place. And I'll double click on that. And the Mariners should be showing up right around 51% if that worked. And uh, perfect, yeah, so you can see the Mariners are showing up as a 51% uh, winning percentage. So let me actually just go to my wins and losses field because we're gonna use them again somewhere else and just set the default aggregation to be maximum. Okay, so now we have the elements that we need to be able to create that scatter plot that I was talking about. So what I'll do is uh, mix this up a little bit. So I'm gonna put uh, run differential on rows, current winning percentage on columns, and then put team on detail. And uh, I think actually I did that opposite of how I wanted to. So let me just use the uh, swap axis uh, button on our toolbar. Okay, so you can see that uh, this is a little bit different looking than the example I showed you in public, but you can see the Detroit Tigers, not so great. Uh, the, uh, oh, actually I didn't know that. The Chicago White Sox have the uh, best run differential. So a few things just to kind of make this chart a bit more usable for us. So first of all, I'm gonna edit the axes so they don't have to be anchored at zero, right? Ideally, no team has a zero winning percentage. Even the worst team is around 30. So I'll edit my axis and deselect include zero. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for my, well, actually the run differential axis is probably fine. That one doesn't need it as much. Change my fit to entire view. Uh, change my mark type to circle make them a little bit larger, make them kind of transparent. Okay. And then because the focus of my dashboard was the Mariners, I created, um, I think I did a group for this so that I could compare the Mariners versus the other teams in their division versus everybody else. So let me just go ahead and uh, create a group here based on this team field. So one group is just gonna be Seattle. The other is going to be the rest of the AL West. So that'd be Texas, Houston, Oakland, and Los Angeles Angels. So there you go, Seattle, AL West, and then now I've just got to get everybody else. Okay, so if that worked correctly, I think it did. I can hit okay. Put my team group on color. And just uh, toggle these colors around a little bit. So I've actually got, I'm so much of a nerd, I have a Mariner's palette actually in. I've created a custom color palette. Uh, don't hate on me. What else are you going to do with your time? Especially this last year, you know? So there you go. So now you can see the Mariners on the green circle. Their immediate opponents, you know, the people in their division they're competing with to try and go to the playoffs are the blue circles, everybody else are the gray circles. And then to simplify this, um, I don't mind having zero for run differential just because you can kind of see like, essentially, are you a positive or are you negative? Uh, all the grid lines for the percentages are a little bit tricky. I think what I'm gonna do is just format and remove all the grid lines, except for, I'm gonna add a one at 50%. So give me a second here, so turn those off. Honestly, I might turn my uh, column grid lines off too. Yeah, I think that looks nicer. Uh, so I'll go to the analytics pane, grab a constant line, drop that on winning percentage at uh, the 50% threshold. I might make it a little bit more subtle. I kind of like the dotted line for I think that's what they did there for the zero. And then uh, put, I could put a, uh, a trend line on here, just a linear trend line to be able to see. Oh, not a linear trend line per color, so let me do a quick edit there. So do not need a recalculated line per color. Uh, it's probably all right. And let me do a little formatting so it's not so dark. There you go. 
something like that. I don't know. I did this a little differently in the version I've published, but that's the general idea. So this is kind of one of my favorite things. I've actually got some plans throughout some different points in the season once I've got the time to sit down and look at it. I want to get even, I'm going to nerd out here for a second, but I want to get even more detailed uh, to be able to look at things like, so not only is your team doing better than expected, you know, how many runs did they score versus what's their winning percentage, but I want to be able to dive into details like, is are your pitchers going to start giving up more runs soon or less runs soon? Like, have they been getting lucky? Or your hitters, have they been getting unlucky? Things like that that could also potentially feed into what, you know, is your team overperforming or underperforming? Okay, so that was kind of the big chart. Um, one of the other ones that I've got in the screenshot there is a uh, waterfall chart just kind of showing the course of the season. So what you can see like in this chart that I've got here is that early in the Mariners season, uh, they kind of lost some games and they lost by a lot. And then they started to go on a bit of a winning streak and they had uh, won some games by a lot, dropped off. And actually this is from a couple weeks ago. So now they've like dropped back off again. So we'll do a kind of a quick rundown of how to do the waterfall chart. I'll just call this the run differential story. So the way this one's going to work is, uh, first of all, I need to filter this down. So this sheet is going to be just the Mariners. Okay. I'm going to put a uh, game number on columns. That's what's going to create the different segmentations. So game number is actually in measures right now. I'm going to flip that up to be dimensions. Throw that on the column shelf. Um, somehow a no null game number slipped through, which is interesting. I'll go ahead and just exclude that. I thought we took care of those. Okay. So if you haven't done a waterfall chart before, um, they just kind of tell the story of kind of gains and losses over time. Uh, and it's actually the mark type that you use for this is called uh, Gantt bar. So you can see that right here in my marks drop down. So I switch this to Gantt bar, and then I'm gonna put my run differential field on, I think I wanna put it on rows actually, okay. So right now, these Gantt bars are just showing absolute values, meaning, okay, the Mariners won their first game by one run, and then they lost their second game by three runs, and they won their next one by four runs, and so on. So if we're looking for sort of the cumulative run differential, we actually need to add a table calculation to the sum of run differential. So go to add table calculation. And the calculation type will be running total. Um, sum is fine, table across is fine. So everything here should be, uh, should be pretty good. Uh, and now for that classic water chart, or waterfall chart feel, I want the Gantt bar to backfill, like, okay, show this, you know, between zero and one. So I can see they won by one run, for instance. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit funky. I'm actually gonna create a calculated field, which is gonna be, I'll call this like run differential backfill. And all that it is, is just the negative value of the run differential. Because even though this, their first game was actually positive one, kind of missed my arrow there, I want it to backfill from one down to zero. So I'll hit OK. I'll put run differential backfill on size in the marks card. And then you can see that it backfills uh, going from one down to zero like that. Okay. Um, so let me do just a couple tweaks here, entire view. I'm going to go ahead and put the actual run differential on color so you can kind of more easily distinguish a win from a loss. I think I did red, green, doesn't, doesn't really matter. Whatever you end up wanting to do there. I don't know. I probably could spend more time on this, but I don't want to get too sucked into it. And then maybe I want to put the actual run differential on label as well. It's probably starting to get a little bit tight to be able to pull that off. Uh, but let's just see here if I can get this all set up so that it looks nice. Not horrible. I don't know. I, I don't love it either. So 
thankfully, I don't think they've had any double digit wins or losses yet, or I don't know if those numbers would fit. Uh, might have to uh, revise my approach here if slash when the, uh, that comes up. Okay, so uh, one more thing that I'm gonna do here is to add get the uh, summary tile worksheet going. So that's just these quick kind of metrics at the top. I'll just call this Mariner's metrics. I forget what I called it in my actual example. So the metrics are their division rank, which I think is something that uh, is already provided. I thought this was provided by that table, but uh, now I'm trying to remember where this came from. Maybe it's this thing here, rank. Let me just double check my underlying data to make sure that's what I think that it is. Yeah, cool. It is rank. So let me just switch rank to be a numeric field. Okay, so for the Mariners, let's start with that. Filter this down to just be the Mariners. I want all their current metrics, like how are things looking today. So... I'm trying to think about the easiest way to do this actually. Because I want like their winning percentage today and their wins today and their losses today, their run differential today and all of that. Now let's just start going. And if I, if I need to make some adjustments on this, then I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, actually, you know what? Rank is gonna be tricky because I can't just put like minimum rank or maximum rank on here because their max, the, the worst they've ever been in their division is fourth place, but the best they've ever been is first place. But today, I think they're maybe like third. So one way to solve this problem, if you ever have a table that's laid out like mine, where it's got an updating value each day, is you can create a calculated field that would give you, you know, their rank, uh, I'll just call this rank current. And so what I'm going to do is game number is essentially kind of like a row ID where the Mariners have like 35 rows and those are games one through 35. So what I could do is I could say something like this is if the uh, fixed on team maximum game number equals the game number field, then give me my rank. So let me just pull that up here for a second. So what this is saying is the fixed function says, you know, each team's not always going to have played the same number of games. Like the Mariners might have played 35, the Padres may have played 40, I don't know. So this says, okay, for each team, give me their maximum game number. If that's equal to the game number on the row that's being, you know, calculated against, then give me my rank. So rank current. I'm gonna go ahead and just put that here instead. Doesn't I don't think the aggregation matters. I could put min, max, whatever. It's gonna say third because the Mariners are in third place right now. Going back to run differential, right? That's first place. This must be second place and the Mariners are in third place. Uh, let me get flip back down below. There we go, okay. So now I want their wins, I want their losses. Those are a little simpler. I can just do max wins, max losses. Let's see, there's wins, there's losses. And let me think what else goes in here. Uh, winning percentage, I think that one should be fine the way we set it up. And I think I put run differential. So I think actually just the sum of run differential should work. Okay, so there's all my measures now. I just need to make them look halfway decent. Um, so let me do a little bit of this. Measure names is gonna go to columns. Okay. Um, I don't like when it does things like this, like max rank current and kind of some of that nonsense. So if, well, let me do a little resorting here and then I'll show you how I would handle that. So I'm gonna set this fit to entire view. And I would like to see what this looks like. I'm gonna get a copy of measure names, just control drag this down to text. Still don't like the max rank current. Maybe I'm just gonna update that title. Give me a second to find that field again. 
So, so that it doesn't say max like in that title, I'm just gonna wrap this whole thing in the max function and I'll just call this uh, division rank. It's gonna break it for a second because I just took it from being a not aggregated field to putting the aggregation in the calculation. So let me move that back out there. Should be good to go. So then to get this to kind of look nice like it does in the dashboard that's currently published, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and not show my header for measure names. Swap the order of measure names and measure values on text. Um, go into text, make some edits here. So maybe my measure names, the label is going to be a little bit bigger. And my measure values are going to be a lot bigger and bold. Okay. Um, let me get these values all centered. Uh, let me fix up the decimal points. You know, for instance, division rank doesn't need any decimals. You can't be third and a half, only third. <laughs> No. Wins, losses, same thing. I probably should have just done that at the same time. All right, so pretty close. Nah, run different. Dang it. All right, I promise I'll stop being uh, crazy about getting my decimals right after this. Okay, so now uh, a couple more things I'm going to do. Tooltip isn't really providing any value, so I'll turn that off. I'm gonna do a little formatting here. So I'm gonna get the background shading to just be kind of a light gray and maybe add some just subtle column dividers here to, uh, to break these different elements up like so. Okay, so we have our three pieces now, probably haven't gotten it you know, nearly as fancy as it is uh, on Tableau Public. Uh, I'll just kind of talk through how I did some of the rest of this. Some of you are just going to laugh at me because I would bet that some of you are so much more sophisticated than me. And if you are more power to you, uh, meaning like maybe you have Adobe Photoshop or something like that, that you like to use. So let's just take like one funny thing, like the little baseball icons at the top. I was just trying to, you know, make it a little bit more fun. I didn't put a ton of effort into it, but you know, I just didn't want just the same old charts and just kind of a dry dashboard. So I wanted to kind of make, put it on theme. And so what I did is I found a free baseball icon on the web and uh, don't laugh at my hacks, but what I did is I just put that baseball icon in PowerPoint just a bunch of times in a row, tried, you know, evenly spaced them and all of that. And I just snipped it, you know, I just, you know, snipped it, got an image, saved it, and then brought this image uh, into Tableau and just put it on my headers and footers. So I wish I could tell you that my process is more sophisticated than that, but uh, you know, sometimes the simplest things are the best things. All right, so now you've got a little insight into that. Let me get that out of the way. So I won't do that just now, just kind of in the interest of time, but I will just kind of slap this together to show you how this all works. So uh, first of all, I had to make my height a little bit taller than I normally would just to get everything to fit correctly. Uh, I'll go ahead and do a dashboard title here and I'll call this our, what do we call? I'll just call this our no Python, no problem example dashboard. Go ahead and just make that show up. So I'm just gonna put my three sheets on here now. So Mariner's metrics is going to the top. Uh, the waterfall charts go into the middle. And then the run differentials go to the bottom. So I think I did a few things here, like, you know, I did like wins versus losses, did some color coding. Just trying to do that quickly. I probably won't do all this. I think I did some color coding in this title here as well. For now, I'll just float this down there just to save us some time. Just arrange that as a single row. Not show the title. Get this all spread out. All right, good enough for me. All right, so I think we're pretty close here. Um, one other thing I was thinking that could be nice about this, instead of just Mariner's metrics, because 
yeah, you could do the math and figure out this is 35 games into the season, but you might also want to know what that date is. So I could probably also do something like division rank where I calculate the date of the latest game um, and put that in the title. So it's like Mariners metrics as of May 9th, 2021. Maybe I'll come back and do that and just kind of put a couple more pieces of fancy in here. Uh, but just for the sake of time, let's we'll get this published up to Tableau public now and I will show uh, you know how it is that you keep it synced up now with that Google Sheets that has the uh, import function. So go to server now you got to sign into tableau public if you're not you can see that i already am so you might have to do that step but now i'm going to call this to save to tableau public as oh actually i need to do it create an extract first let me do that so tableau public always wants your data extracted so let me just right click on my uh tap my uh data source name at the top of my data pane extract my data um, i could probably just leave that data source filter I don't know. I, that's something I would keep an eye on. If that causes problems, maybe come back and take that data source filter off. All right, so create an extract. Okay, let me just hide all my sheets so it doesn't publish everything. All right, back to publishing. Tableau public, save a Tableau public as. I'll just call this our no Python, no problem. Example dashboard. And you can see down there at the bottom, this is kind of the, one of the main pieces here. Keep my data in sync with Google Sheets. Perfect. Hit that, save. Uh, it's gonna take its time, do its thing. I'm trying to remember. It might ask me for to like um, allow my drive to be uh, accessed by Tableau Public, you know, so it could keep it up to date. So we'll see if that pops up or what that looks like. Uh, kind of just keep an eye on it here as it publishes. Um, so while that publish is finishing up, oh, there it goes. It's going to be a little more patient, I guess. Cool. So that's, I mean, that's kind of largely it. It should stay up to date now. Let me just check to make sure there's no other features on here that I've uh, been meaning to tell you about. I think that's pretty much it. So with that update of saying keep it in sync with Google Sheets, it'll update once a day. Now you don't have a ton of control over when that updates happened. I've noticed my updates typically happen between like 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. I don't know if that's true for everybody. You can also request one-off updates as well. So if it, like, it just updated at 3 p.m. and you really want it updated, you can come uh, for your dashboards only. You can go log into your Tableau Public and select request update. And I've usually found that within an hour uh, it's updated as well. So yeah, that, uh, that might be of interest. This stuff, it's, it, it works pretty well. It's a little finicky. There's been a couple times where I've had to go back and tweak something or, or change a little code to get it to work. Uh, but it, by and large, it does work and it's pretty awesome. And I've, I've seen some really cool dashboards where people have you know been keeping track of real-time data, whether that's weather, air quality, um, all sorts of things, and keeping that synced up with Tableau Public. And one of the coolest things is this can all be done for free. Tableau Public, free. Google Sheets, free. Connecting to data on the web, free. Even if you don't have Tableau Desktop Professional or Tableau Desktop, um, what's the other one? I don't remember the professional, the other one. Uh, you, are, you can also do use Tableau Public Desktop. If you don't know what that is, you can just Google it. You can download it. It's limited in what kind of connections it can create and you can't save files locally. You can only save them to your Tableau Public account. But you could do this all for free. So if you have a friend that wants to get into data visualization and they're kind of on the fence, uh, that's what I'd recommend is, hey, you know, you can use Tableau and you can learn all this without dropping a dime. So uh, cool. Thanks for being here. I know I'm just running a little bit over. Uh, I always wonder if I'm going to have enough to say to fill the time and always I wish that I had more. So I uh, really appreciate you being here for our first run of the uh, One Number YouTube Live. Hopefully we'll do, be doing a few more of these. I think that 
we'll kind of use these for more laid back things like this. The webinars we'll probably still do for a little bit more formal events. Uh, but yeah, really appreciate you being here. Um, thank you again. I'll stick around for an extra minute. Um, you're welcome to kind of put questions in the chat. And then, yeah, once I'm not seeing anything else, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, close it down. And if it worked correctly, I am recording this. So uh, I'll be publishing that. And so you can kind of come back and, you know, revisit any of the concepts that we talked about or share this with others if you want to. So um, thanks again if you got a jump. Really appreciate it. I uh, always love connecting with y'all. And uh, yeah, we'll look forward to doing something else like this soon, I guess.